Hey everyone, welcome to this very festive episode of KG Customs. I'm KG and I'm a customizer and I like to make all kinds of nerdy things. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this heavily inspired Spider Man No Way Home pop socket wallet. Let's get into it. So this project is actually going to be a Christmas gift to one of my best friends. His girlfriend messaged me back in November and asked if I wanted to make a custom Spider-Man pop socket for him. And being a Spider-Man fan myself, I said yes. So I jumped straight into action and drew something out. So the disc was actually going to be the mask, which I kind of like and I kept that. And the wallet section was actually going to be a suit. But as you can see, when I put it together, it kind of looks like Kingpin from Into the Spider-Verse like all hunched over so I had to rethink the wallet section. Then watching the No Way Home trailer I got a little bit of inspiration from the multiverse. What if I could have all the Spider-Men in one place? So I printed off a bunch of Daily Bugle articles and comic books and put them all on the wallet and it really came together. I loved this idea so this is what I ran with. Most of the images I got from Google, but I did make these three of my own. Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. Even though Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield may not be in the movie, their villains are, so I thought I would add them to the piece as well. I didn't record this in my last Pop Soccer video, you can check that out here. But this is what I do to prep a surface to get ready for paint. I'll just go through various grits of sandpaper, just getting it nice and smooth. Before putting UV resin on the final piece, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a little test. So on the left, we have just paper and on the right, we have a clear coat of paper. I wasn't sure what kind of effect the clear coat would have on the resin, but as you can see, it's worked really well. It's even helped the paper retain more of its whiteness too. I'm now confident that the clear coat method is the right way to do it. To clear coat a whole batch, I've taped them to a board and it's off to the booth. For this pop socket, I'm going to create a base that I can sit on when it's not on the phone. I want to make it out of XPS foam as this is more durable, but I don't have any at the moment. So I'm just repurposing this old dio I made a while back. Since it's only a little bit of foam and knee, this'll do fine. I'll draw a simple brick pattern onto the foam using a ruler just to make sure everything is evenly spaced. Then using a hobby blade, I'll score the lines, making sure not to go too far in. And then I'm going to come back in with the pencil just to deepen those lines, thus cementing the brick effect into the foam. And using different techniques, I'm going to weather the piece just to make it look a little bit more worn. Going through my box of bits, I actually found these tentacles that belong to the 2004 Doc Ock action figure, which that figure has long since perished as I've used it for another custom. So these will go nicely on this base. Oh, 
I've marked where I want it to go on the base by pressing it into the foam, creating an indent. Then I'm going to use my hobby blade to cut the indent out, allowing the tentacle to be pushed in. This makes a nice snug fit which will help later on when it comes to gluing it in. Using a pencil I'm going to create some cracks on the ground as I want it to appear that the tentacle is piercing through. I also carved a little channel for the pop socket to fit in. I keep checking to make sure everything is where I want it to be. I'm using bamboo sticks to align the wall and the ground which will help when it comes to gluing them together. I then made more cracks in the wall where I want the other end of the tentacle to go. Using a ball of aluminum I'm going to create some texture by pressing it into the foam. This just breaks up the smoothness and will look more convincing as stone or brick once dry brushed. I then go back and forth between the hobby blade and aluminum ball until I'm happy with how it looks. Once I'm happy with the texture, I'm then ready to glue it. For this, I'm just using some hot glue. To seal everything in and base coat it at the same time, I'm using a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge, credited to Black Magic Craft. I can then put this to one side to dry. While that dries, I'm going to make some progress on the wallet. The images are ready and I can transfer them to some double-sided sticky tape. This will just allow me to stick it to the wallet. Now they're all stuck down, I can start the lengthy process of cutting them out. I definitely need to invest in some sticker paper as this would have saved me a lot of time and mess. I jumped the gun a little bit here as I put blue tack on the wallet to prevent the UV resin from spilling over. But all it did was get in the way so I ended up removing this after a while. But let's get some of these images stuck down. Ah! Uh, anyway, I'm using some tweezers to remove the backing of the sticky tape and putting them on the wallet. I didn't have any particular plan, I was just sticking them down in random places. I was absolutely loving how it was turning out, I just needed to fill in all the spaces I had missed. For this, I'll just use the offcut saving me from printing any more out. Then I was ready to stick down the Spider-Man so they are on top and visible. With everything masked off, I was ready to pour the resin. This is very nerve wracking as I only have one shot at it. I thought I'll take my time to get it all nice and even, but noticed the color of the paper change, so I quickly cured it.
This left me with a very bumpy surface as you can see. I thought I had ruined the piece, but with a little encouragement from my wife, I started the sanding process. I'm doing a dry sand at 320 grit to 600, and then I'll do a wet sand to 3000 grit. To lock in the work that I've done, I'm going to use some Mustoli and Mac Clear Coat. And with that, the wallet is done, and I absolutely love the finish on this piece. The base is completely dry and I can get back to work on it. I was originally going to make it look as though the tentacle was bursting through the wall, through this hole in the back, but at the last minute I decided to put it in the front. I feel that this gives the illusion that there's more than one tentacle. Since I made a hole in the front, I'm going to have to come back in with my hobby blade just to create some more cracks. Then using some black acrylic, I'm going to paint the cracks. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I'm just gonna put it to the side for one second, just while I prime the pop socket disc using Rust-Oleum Surface Primer. Then using Vallejo Air White, I'm going to paint the disc. I'm also trying out the Xenophil highlight technique on the base. Even though you can't tell in the end, it was really cool to see it work. I mixed up some grey acrylic and I'm using the dry brush method to layer on the paint, hitting the high points. I will add a bit more white with each pass just to make it lighter which creates a very convincing concrete effect. Then mixing red acrylic with a bit of black, I dry brush the bricks. I'm coming back in with some more grey paint just to pick out individual bricks for variation. To add further dimension to the base, I've made an oil wash by mixing some oil paint and spirits. This will seep into the cracks creating shadows and will also cover up any of the blue foam I've missed. I'm just dabbing away any of the excess using a pad and I'm just going to leave this to try once this is done. Back to the disc and as you can see I've masked off all the sections of the mask that I don't want to paint black. Using my hobby blade I attempted to make the lenses but it didn't really show well in the end. I still gave it a go so that's why I've left it in. Then using Vallejo Air Black, I'm going to fill in the lenses. Yeah. 
I tried to do a bit of a gradient in the middle of the lenses, but this didn't pan out, so I need more practice with the air gun for sure. But removing the masking tape, you can see it's made a nice crisp line. I really like how these turned out. Now back to the base, I'm ready to glue in the tentacles. For this, I'm just using some hot glue. To check that the wallet still fits in the channel, I'm just using mine as reference. Then I can hot glue the other tentacle in. Now the base is pretty much done, although I do add a little detail off camera, but you'll see that in the end. For the disc, I decided to prime it again before spraying it with Vallejo Air Red. As you can probably tell, I did have a bit of clean up to do, but it wasn't too bad. I tried adding a few lines on the lenses as they just didn't look right to me, but I pressed on anyway. Unfortunately, I've lost the footage of painting the spiderweb on the disc. It's upsetting, but as I said in my last video, some of my footage will get lost as I'm still trying to balance being a father and a YouTuber. So please bear with me and I will get better, I promise. The disc is now ready for the resin. I was having a little trouble keeping it level, so I'm placing it on a disposable cup, which worked a treat. Then I pour the resin. I use the lighter to pop any air bubbles and I do several passes of the UV light just to make sure it's 100% cured. It also gets the same treatment as the wallet, going from 320 grit all the way to 3000 grit. Get a lovely smooth surface. The eyes were just bothering me too much, so I decided to paint the lenses over the resin, which created a happy little accident as they have a sort of 3D effect. Not sure if the camera can pick it up, but it looks really cool in person. To finish off the base, I decided to cut some styrene sheets for the back and the bottom to hide any imperfections of the foam. I then painted it black to frame it. And with that, it was done. What's happening? They're starting to come through. And I can't stop him. <laughs> So Alex, I really hope you like your gift and Merry Christmas to you. Um, also want to thank Liana, his lovely girlfriend. Without her, this video wouldn't be possible. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment down below. And always remember to stay... Precisely wrapped in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Hmm? Get <laughs>
looks amazing. You do all these little prototype designs that he's done. Ah. Get the plan for it. Dear Alex, you are now the proud owner of one of a kind custom pop socket wallets. I hope this Christmas is amazing for you both and I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for choosing KG Customs. I appreciate it so much. Yours sincerely, KG Customs. Yay! <laughs> amazing. Now, this isn't the strangest thing you've caught me doing, so don't even... <laughs>